Good morning. Thank you for joining me on this uh, Saturday, May 30th, for your morning prayer. Uh, I'm Pastor Sean, and it is uh, my pleasure to uh, provide this for you. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. We have a short psalm for... Uh, today, Psalm 43, just five verses. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth, and let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your holy and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the lyre, O God my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. All right, and for our scripture, we've got the remainder of uh, John chapter 8, verses 39 through 59. So they answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. <laughs> you are doing your, what your father did. They said to him, We were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from, from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the word of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and to keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. In many various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he has spoken to us by his son. Okay, so uh, I've been alluding to this uh, definitely yesterday and even probably in the past week. Oh, stretch. Is that it, it's, it's hard when they chop up 
the text like they do. They divide them out like this because, um, I mean, it's obvious that this is a continuation of what we were reading yesterday. It's it's the same conversation. So it's, it's not even like a different scene. It's, it's right in the middle of the conversation. So, um, you know, the everything that was building up to, I mean, it's, it's all one cohesive unit. So not to say that you can't pull things out of it, but it just makes it harder um, to get that consistent line of thought going. So I think where you know, a lot of what we've been talking about is hypocrisy, Jesus calling them out for that, um, that they have, the people have forgotten who they are, uh, that they don't really understand anymore what it means to be a child of God, a child of Abraham, uh, a, a um, member of the house of Israel. It's, they, 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 um, let's leave this noise off. Okay. Um, they always kind of point to that as, as a source of pride for them. Like, oh, we are, we are, we are the chosen ones. We are the, we are Israel. And yet they don't really fully understand, seemingly don't understand what that means. Um, it's just become corrupted by this point. So Jesus comes and he's bringing the truth and they just... It, <laughs> what I find interesting about this this kind of back and forth is that not only it, it's it's more than they they won't hear it, it's like they can't hear it. Um, you know it, the the obstinance and the the stubbornness of just kind of going back and forth where you know they get all up in arms because he's oh you're saying your father is God but well, our father is God you know I have, they have they have no problem with the claim of being God's sons or children if it's applied to them, but they get all kind of up in a huff when Jesus claims it. And, um, you know, essentially, you know, they get, they get all uh, bent out of shape because he says their father is, is of the devil or is the devil. And they turn around, they, they say the same thing to Jesus. I mean, that's what they're, that's what they're alluding to this entire time is that he is not of God. And if you're not of God, then you're of the devil. I mean, it's one or the other. So they, they, they lash out, you know, are we, are we not right in saying that you're a Samaritan and have a demon? I mean, they're just name calling, just uh, being nasty. And uh, I'll, I'll circle back around to this: they can't hear, they can't understand. Uh, but the it culminates to where you know, he talks about Abraham has seen this day and was you know glad to see it, and they they go, oh, come on, Abraham died, you know centuries ago are you saying that you you've seen abraham and this is the where he says before abraham was i am and what's behind that is he's using god's personal name he's saying yahweh and that was a big no-no for them that was uh you weren't allowed to say that word so they picked up stones to throw them because that was a a punishable by death if you if you uh, broke that commandment about taking the lord's name in vain you were stoned to death but he hid himself and, and left now the, the interesting thing there is that you know he he challenges them he says who, who convicts me of sin you know who can step up and say i have broken any commandments and, and nobody can and they feel vindicated at the end because here they say oh he was breaking the second commandment he was you know, taking the Lord's name in vain. Um, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Okay. Claiming, claiming the personal name of God for himself. Terribly blasphemous in their eyes. But the thing is, um, the commandment was never about not saying the name of God at all. In fact, the, the reason they pick up the stones is because they, uh, throughout the years... Uh, the Jews had layered all these laws on top of the commandments in order to prevent them from breaking it. So the idea was it was supposed to protect. See, that's why we kind of get this idea in our head like, oh, the, the, the people of Israel had you know, so many hundreds and hundreds of laws on top of what God gave them. So they had these man-made laws and the people were oppressed by them. You know, the Pharisees are the bad guys. They came up with all these laws to oppress the people. To make them, to make it harder on the people, so that they could exert their power over them. Classic move, right? But it wasn't really the case. 
In fact, all these extra laws were brought about in order to make it easier for the people to actually make the law something that could be attainable for anybody. And the way this works is that if you say, you know, don't take the Lord's name in vain, well, that, that has a broad application. Um, you know, the, our, God's name is placed on us. So in our activities, in our actions, if we show ourselves to be, you know, a, you know, a sinner, that's we're we're profaning God's name because His name is is upon us, and so we are by our visible actions, by whatever, we are profaning that name. Um, it's not just about speaking His name. So, in order to make it so it's actually easier for the people, they say, okay, well, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Lord's name in vain. So we we will build a a little fence around it, saying, okay, don't use the Lord's name at all. Because if you don't use it, you can't break the commandment, right? So then they build another little fence around that one. It says, okay, don't write it. That's why in, in your Old Testament, you see little places where it has LORD in all caps. Well, that's, in the, in the original text, that's where God's personal name was used, Yahweh. So you couldn't write it. So you just replace it with LORD. So you start building all these fences around, around, around until you get to the point where you can't say the name of God, you can't write the name of God, you can't, um, you know, it's just the, the name of God is, is off limits completely. The idea being is that you can keep yourself then from breaking the commandment. Anyway, back to what I was saying, is they get all upset because he's broken their man-made law that is attempting to keep them from breaking the commandment. So, but he's not breaking any commandment. You know, he's claiming the personal name of God for himself because that's his name. <laughs> he's God. Um, he is part of, you know, a, a person of the Trinity. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the fun thing is that they, they want to convict him of sin so bad and he finally breaks something in their mind and it's like he hasn't broken anything. He, he's, he's transgressed the rules that they made up because they were deficient and couldn't fulfill the law that he can. So it's, it's quite remarkable what, what goes on there. Um, but now going back to, to kind of the, the conflict and the back and forth, you know, they, they can't, they can't understand. They can't fathom what Jesus is saying. They're prevented from it. And you see, Jesus explains why is you, you of your, are, you are of your father, the devil, you know, he is whispering lies in your ear. You, you can't hear this because you have sold out to him completely. Um, you know, you, you think you're of God, but you're not listening to him. You're not hearing me. Uh, so the only alternative is that. And so it, that's why it just keeps going round and round and round. And it seems like they are completely incapable of grasping anything Jesus says. And that seems to be the case. So for us, you know, we, we, well, we certainly want to, you know, recognize when we are not hearing God's word, <laughs> when we are not receiving it, because you know, in, in, in the void of, of that, you know, some, some, something's going to fill that void. And if, uh, if it's not God, then it's, it's not the truth. But, um, what was I going to say about that? We want to, and I, I think I touched on this maybe yesterday, the day before, I don't know. It's been a long week. That we can, we, we tend to be stubborn like this too. Um, we always need to check ourselves when it comes to hearing God's word and really hearing it. And sometimes we have to, it feels like it shouldn't be this way. If we're baptized, if we're Christians, you know, we should be able to get into the word and... You know, the Holy Spirit speaks it to our hearts, we absorb it, and we hear the truth, and it's like, yes, amen, this is, this is the stuff I need, I know it. But it's, our sinful flesh is still there, just fighting against it tooth and nail. And so, we think it should be easier to read, hear, understand, digest scripture than it, than it is. Because it's hard. Because our we want to fight against it, we want to hear it in our own sp 
spe specific, special way, particular way, whatever. Um, anything that will confirm our bias, our agendas, our thoughts, our preconceived notions. Um, that's how we want scripture to work, is to conform to what we've already kind of suspected is true. And that's the hardest thing. And there's no really easy, fast, quick solution to this. You know, I could say that when you go to scripture, you know, if you have an idea, scripture's going to tell you the opposite. <laughs> but that's not always true. Um, but we definitely should approach scripture open to the idea that it, it needs to change us. And that is, that's huge. Um, I mean, this is kind of the problem with the people hearing Jesus speak, is that, I mean, what he's saying, if it's true, is, is earth-shattering for them. I mean, it changes their whole understanding of, of, of God, of, of what it means to be them. It, it shouldn't. It really shouldn't, because they're, they're people of, of, of Scripture. They, they've been taught this. They should, be, they, they should know this. So when Jesus comes, he, he's not bringing something different. He's bringing the, the, the culmination of the scriptures. But because they've got such a, a, a wrong view of, of what, it's, what it is or what it's supposed to be, um, that's why when Jesus comes and, and proclaims what he proclaims, it sounds like it's, oh my gosh, this is radical. This is something totally different. The reality is it's not. Um, not if you are really hearing God through the scriptures and, and looking where it was leading it would be pointing right to Jesus. Now, granted, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes those connections for us, but again, that if, if you are in the Word, if you are receiving God's Word, the Holy Spirit is working through that. So, um, for us, you know, it's always that challenge of al allowing for the Holy Spirit to, to change the way we look at things, the way we approach things, our understanding of something. Um, even if that means something that we are very passionate about in one sense, we realize, you know what, I've been coming at it in the wrong direction. And either I need to switch gears or I was wrong. That's a huge hard thing to do. Um, <laughs> it really is. But we, we need to be open to do that. And uh, <laughs> one of the, the go-tos is, is usually whenever I'm I go down this kind of a road. I always imagine somebody who is uh, who hears that and says, "Oh yes, you know, right on. You know, if only if only some other people would would hear this and realize that they're wrong. You know, they need to go back to scripture and and usually if you're coming at it from that angle, I would say, well, then maybe you have something you need to revisit. Because um, honest, honestly, when I find that when we are so completely sure about um, something and this is not like you know jesus is lord that's good you know if, if you are sold out on that good job um any of the that that kind of stuff yes we should all be in in perfect agreement with that but when it comes to the way we look at other people the way we uh live our lives the the ideas we have about um what is sin and what is not sin that's that's the area where we we hold on to the most um I think because we, we have these non-negotiables, Jesus is the Son of God, the Trinity, all these core doctrines that form the basis of our faith, uh, those, we can't touch those, and we shouldn't. <laughs> so we, we take all the extraneous little things, like, well, what, is that really a sin? Is that really all bad? We take those things that we think are gray areas, and we like to play with those. So um, let's go into Scripture and let the Holy Spirit work through it. You know, don't 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 push it. Push yourself onto Scripture. Let let Scripture come and um, and remake you <laughs> to create in you a new heart. That seems to be a scriptural kind of thing. So, all right, off my soapbox. There we go. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eterni eternal trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. 
Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me again. I uh, hope this is a uh, blessing to you today and that I uh, encourage you to be in the scriptures. Uh, you know, read, read some text today and um, just before you, you do, pray that, pray that uh, God would use the Holy Spirit to, to change your heart, to remold it into uh, one that resembles his own. So it's a challenge. <laughs> it truly is. But uh, it, is, it is a wonderful thing. So peace be with you.